Hi, I'm Andrew from Scottish Community Development Centre and I'm going to take you through the second of three short videos on participation requests. If you watched the first video already, you'll have had an introduction to what participation requests are. Now in this second video, I'm going to take you through how to make a participation request, including how to take part in the process or discussion that's set up as a result of making one. And if you go on to watch the third and final video, you'll get some real life examples of participation requests. Right, now for the important bit. How do you actually make a participation request? You have to fill in a form which will ask you to show you are the right type of group to make a participation request, state an outcome that you think can be improved. We'll come back to this. Then answer some questions about what your group will bring and why you should be involved. Where do you get this form from? You'll probably have some idea of which public service authority you want to make the participation request to. Let's imagine it's NHS Grampian. The first thing to do will be to find their information on participation requests. And one place to look for this is online. So you could either type NHS Grampian and participation request into your favourite search engine, or you could look for the relevant page on their website. The first search result that you see should be the community empowerment section of NHS Grampian's website. As well as some background to participation requests, it provides links to further information, as well as NHS Grampian's participation request policy. NHS Grampian's form is at the end of this policy. It contains eight questions based on a standard template that all public service authorities have to use. As with most of the forms, a lot of the technical terms we saw earlier are there, so it can be a bit off-putting at first glance. However, if you break it down, the form is asking five things. Who you are, who you are making the request to. It's asking for an outcome that you think can be improved. It's wanting you to answer some questions about what your group will bring and why you should be involved. And the form asks you to show that you are the right type of group. We've got guides to completing the questions in our online resource pack on SCDC's website. The question with the fewest words is actually one of the most important. Question four asks, describe the outcome the community participation body, that's you, want to improve. To understand why we're saying this is so important, let's look at what an outcome is. At its simplest level, an outcome is the change you want to see. Examples are improved health and reduced child poverty. Examples of what aren't outcomes are a new bus route or preventing the closure of a local service such as a library. Of course, these may be things you want to see happen, but they aren't what we mean by outcomes. They can be thought of as steps along the way. Think, where do we want to be? Hopefully, it's a bit clearer now why it's important to get the outcome right. It gives your group and the public service authority a goal to aim for that you both agree on. You can now discuss the best way of achieving this. A good outcome also makes the participation request harder for the public service authority to refuse. And here's how. If we go back to the basics of what a participation request is and ignore the technical terms for now, a community group can make a participation request to ask to have a discussion with organisations in charge of public services about how to improve these services. You may be wondering, can't the request simply be refused? When you normally request to participate or take part in something, the person or organisation you are asking can just say no, and sometimes you may not even hear back at all. In this case, it doesn't quite work like that. 
What makes a participation request different is that by law, the Public Service Authority should agree to your request. And if it doesn't, it must explain why not, giving good reason for this. It must make its decision based on a range of considerations, such as whether it increases public health or environmental well-being and whether it reduces inequality. That might look quite daunting, but don't worry about having to meet all of these considerations. So long as you show in your participation request that you want to work towards an outcome that fits with these, you should be okay. All you are asking in effect is that you want to contribute your group's ideas and lived experience towards improving one or more of these things, something that should be very hard to reasonably refuse. So we've looked at the form and learned about how to word an outcome. So you're pretty much there. But once you actually submit the form, how long will things take? First of all, the form must be validated as correctly filled in and you should receive notification of this. Once the request is validated, the decision must be made within 30 days or 45 days if the request is to more than one authority. You'll receive a decision notice saying whether or not the request has been granted and why. If your request has been agreed to, the decision notice must also describe what the outcome improvement process will be and how you will be involved. Remember, the outcome improvement process is the formal discussion where your group gets to contribute ideas and hear others around how to improve the service. This process must be established within 90 days of the request being agreed to. The process can take different forms. It will probably consist of meetings, discussions and actions to make things better. You might be involved in an existing process. For instance, if your request was around reducing crime, you might be involved in a community safety partnership. Or a new process might be set up. The Public Service Authority gets to decide how the process will work and how you will be involved. But you will get a chance to suggest changes to any new process. It will be good for you to think about what makes a good process and even to set this out in a working agreement if possible. Some of the things to ensure are in place are what change you want to see, the outcome, who should be involved, including from your group, from the public service authority and anyone else. The different roles and responsibilities that people will have, what the timescales will be and how reporting will work. How you will work together in terms of the practical arrangements for meetings etc. And also in terms of the approaches that are used. For instance, one approach might be to use less formal discussions rather than structured meetings, which can be intimidating. It's also important to establish how you will be supported to take part. It is the responsibility of public service authorities to ensure support is available, to help make a participation request, and to take part in the resulting meetings and other activities as part of the process. It will be a good idea to ask about support before you make a participation request and also before you enter into any outcome improvement process, as this support may not be offered automatically. So at the end of all this, what is likely to be the end result? It is important to say that just because your participation request is agreed to, doesn't mean you will get what you wanted. It's a conversation, not a guarantee. In other words, if the process works well, all perspectives should be considered as part of the conversation and the best decision reached. The Public Service Authority must report on the process once completed, and this should show how the outcome has been improved, as well as how your participation has contributed to this. 
All public service authorities must also report annually on the participation requests that they have received and how many of these they have agreed to or refused. Thanks for watching. If you want to find out more, you can visit our participation request resource pack at www.scdc.org.uk forward slash participation hyphen requests. You'll find loads of information on different aspects of participation requests, including in accessible formats. And if you want to stay on, you can watch the third of our videos on participation requests, which focuses on real life examples of groups in Scotland who have made participation requests. And there's also an opportunity to take part in an exercise where you get to start thinking about making your own participation request.